can always go back and adjust it so it's a little more safe than doing a cartoon illustration the way he was doing. But it's just something you want to be aware of. Now those brushes work great for light tones and dark tones. Um, I try to just, I, I know that I should be doing custom brushes and I've experimented with it a little, but I find that um, the more I limit myself to something that works very in a very basic fashion, the more I can learn from the paint and have control over the final look of it just by my decisions, not dictated by the chaos or randomness of the brush stroke. Um, now that is not to say you should not create custom brushes in Photoshop. Um, I might cover that in a future lesson once I get a little more co uh, comfortable with it. But I do know that um, this is what I do. This is what works for me. This is where I feel like there's just enough control over this medium that I can still have my personal touch to it. So um, right now I'm working on some basic uh, highlights and uh, you can see I'm, I'm reworking the mouth. That's what I love about paint. Uh, you can go back and you can just rework it. Digital paint, oil paint, acrylic, gouache, watercolor. You can go back and you can rework it. Now watercolor is a little more difficult because it's not an opaque paint, but opaque paints are wonderful. There's no reason you have to commit to a line. There's no reason you have to commit to a color. Now, um, you definitely want to try to discipline yourself and practice to the point where you can become comfortable with the drawing, have a solid drawing to start off, have a solid color understanding, have a solid um, uh, palette understanding of what colors you want to use, why you use them, how to see them. Um, you have to have all this down, but the great thing is, and this is something I learned recently when I was at the Sebastian Kruger workshop. And what I mean by learned is um, this is something that you hear a hundred times, you think of all the time on your own, but it doesn't really sink in until you see a master do it, until you see someone that you respect and admire and you're looking for what they're doing and how they're approaching their craft when you see them execute this. And what I'm talking about is painting over something, painting on top, painting again, just moving forward with your painting. I always feel like when I start my own paintings about a year or two ago, I, I had to get the drawing just right. And I felt confident when I had a good drawing. And then once I had a good drawing, I feared moving on to painting because it could go well. And then once I get one area that doesn't go the way I want it to or doesn't look the way I planned it, I feel like, uh, you know what? I learned a lot with this piece, but I should just move on to the next one. It served its purpose. And I would feel like I can't recover from that. Now, I watched Sebastian Kruger paint. He, I guess now this is the third year or fourth year, he has a painting workshop. And if you've never heard of or seen Sebastian Kruger's work, check it out. There's Just do a search on Google for him. It's K-R-U-G-E-R, -E Sebastian Kruger. He is an amazing German painter, and he does primarily caricatures and portraits. I guess now he sticks to um, surrealist pop portraits, which are, um, are quite impressive. And he was painting at his workshop this past year. I finally got a chance to attend one, and I saw it as a great opportunity to practice and to learn something by watching him. And that's where I get the most out of, out of my own learning, is by seeing someone else do what they do, or seeing the piece in person and talking to them. So I saw him painting, and... The way he would draw with paint, with ease, on the first step of his painting, he would tone the canvas and then just lay down some basic lines. And it was just a loose gesture drawing. And he was just mapping out how his painting would go. From there, I see him lay down a dark tone, then lay down a light tone, and then mix a peach and just dive right into one of the faces. And he would paint over this edge and then over that edge and then block in a shape and then redefine that shape right on top of it. And it made me realize that all he has to do is once he tries something, just take a step back. Just stand 20 feet away from your painting, look at it. It was a fairly large painting, so he could stand that far away. Take a look at it and realize, oh, uh, that shape's not working. I'm going to go redo it. And he'd step right in and redo it. And he knew that he didn't have to worry about that. It's an opaque paint. He can go right on top of it. And this happened a couple times uh, with a painting I was working on. Um, if you check out my blog, it's joebloom.blogspot.com, spelled B-L-U-H-M. You can see, uh, if you scroll through the archives, about a month or two ago, might have been the end of September, maybe October. It was probably in October of this year, 2008. Um, you'll see that there's a painting of uh, 
um, my girlfriend and her dog I did when I was over there. And I just wanted something where I, I can have a good composition in the photograph and I could just practice with the paint. I didn't want to think too much about it. Plus I didn't have any reference ready when I left. So I took a picture of them and I painted that. And um, at one point when I was probably 90% finished with the painting, I set it against the wall and I stood about 20 feet away and I took a look at it. And I noticed something that I wasn't noticing close up and most of the other artists there weren't noticing is that to me, her eye, one eye, was a little too low and towards the center of her face. And I'm talking a quarter inch, just a, just a little, maybe a half inch, just a little bit off. But it was really bothering me. It was the one part that I felt like was structurally unsound in the painting. And I was so close to being finished and that eye was already painted pretty well. It was a closed eye, fortunately. It wasn't open, so it was a little less work. And uh, my one friend Jeremy told me I was crazy to, to worry about it. But I just thought, you know what? I, I feel the... I feel the, the confidence and the ease of this just after seeing Sebastian do it. So I just set the canvas back on my, uh, on my table on the easel and I painted right over that eye. I redrew it and repainted it. And I felt like there was no pressure. So I think that that's something that's, uh, that's wonderful about digital painting is doing the undo. You can gain a confidence with experimentation and knowing that you can paint opaque is just repaint it. Getting that confidence of knowing that nothing is final until you say it's final. And not just thinking about it and knowing that, but actually trying it and feeling confident when you do it is so important. And that's something that, you know, I've been painting since I was, oh gosh, I don't know, five years old, six years old. I've been drawing and painting. I've been really painting with acrylics and oils. Well, acrylics anyway, since I was eight. Um, you know, painting dogs and portraits and houses. And then through college in oil and watercolor and and now, years and years later, I finally gained that confidence after seeing someone do it. So um, it's something that you might get right away. It's something that you might not really fully understand until a little later, but but it's it's very important and vital. And um, if it's something you've already experienced, you should be very excited about it. I'm still excited about it. And I've started a couple paintings since the Sebastian Kruger workshop that I really, um, I feel I'm using that, that, that little bit of inspiration. Um, so if, anyway... Aside from that, if you if you are interested, Sebastian Kruger, I believe, is having a painting workshop in uh, between Los Angeles and San Francisco. You can check out on his on his blog if you look it up on Google. I believe I have it linked on my blog, joebloom.blogspot.com. On the sidebar, you'll see a little link. It's the first one, Sebastian Kruger, and uh, you can find an announcement for his his classes, his weekend courses in in California next year. And he, of course, has the one in Germany every year. I believe it's limited, um, and I will say that it is not a beginner's course per se, but it's for people who really want to go and experience him painting, watch him paint, um, just have a chance to have a drink with him and look over his shoulder and have him look over your shoulder and just get some good solid practice in and enjoy Germany countryside. Um, but I do recommend it highly to anyone who's fairly serious with uh, practicing painting for about three to five days. It's really worth it. Now what I've been doing here, as you can see, is just laying down lights and darks, experimenting with color. I'm really whittling at that shadow under his eyes. I don't want it to be too heavy of a shadow. It is a cast shadow. And something I've learned between cast shadows and, and shadows over the edge of a form is one is soft and one is harsh edged. The cast shadow over his eyes is going to have a harder edge than something maybe across the bottom of his nose where it's a shadow rolling underneath the object. But I don't want to go too harsh with it. I don't want it to be a solid line and draw too much attention to that shadow. Um, now, that's not a bad idea if you were, say, to do this painting and say, well, I would love to have a hard edge on that shadow. That's fine. This is just the decision I was making at the time. Um, and uh, once I got to a certain point with that eye, you can see I'm moving on to the beard and just throwing in some colors. And once again, the great part about digital painting is I try color and, oh, that's really bluish gray. Well, I'm going to knock that edge back a little bit, and try to redefine that color. It's, uh, it's extremely easy to do and, and, um, and you have the option of just trying, failing, retrying. It's, it's incredible. So uh, 